Hi guys, thank you for joining me back here again on the 401 Files. Please, before we jump into this one, do click that subscribe button, give this one a thumbs up, and as always, the YouTube algorithm really does favour comments. So that box below, guys, is all yours. Do with it as you wish. Thoughts, feelings, opinions, whatever it may be, get down below, guys, and leave as many comments as you wish. Now, to all you Bigfoot fans out there, please do stick around to the end because this one is mind-blowing. This is one of those Bigfoot stories that really take me off the fence and sway more in favour of Bigfoot being real. This blew my mind. I know you guys are going to really love this. Like I said, subscribe, thumbs up, comment below. <laughs> Hi Ben, I'm loving the channel and all the effort that you put into making your videos. If you don't mind, however, I would like to remain anonymous throughout this story, but don't mind you sharing it with your listeners. In 2008, I was looking for a big change in my life. I knew that I needed to take drastic action. I had just come through a nasty divorce and was sick to death of working dead end jobs. I finally made the decision then to move from Fort Nelson to Regina in 2008. I wanted to be closer to my family, but also I just landed my dream job as a school teacher. With my minivan crammed full of all my belongings, I set off on the long journey to Regina. The scenery was absolutely stunning and I can honestly say that I've never seen so much wildlife while out driving on the road before. I saw bears, moose, and a long list of other cute little critters. After hours of driving, it eventually began to get dark and I was becoming increasingly tired. I started winding my window down at first in the hopes that the cold air would keep me awake. And this did work for a little while, but eventually I decided to bite the bullet and stop for a few hours rest. I pulled in off the side of the road and headed down an old dirt track. Now, when I say that I was in the middle of nowhere, I mean I was quite literally in the middle of nowhere. The nearest gas station to me was a few hours drive at the time, and there was no towns or houses for miles. At first, I tried to lay my seat back, but the amount of rubbish in the back of the van was just completely preventing me from laying the seat flat. After a few hours of trying to make the best of a bad situation, I was so uncomfortable, fed up and beyond tired that I decided to jump out of the van and take a quick pee. The minute I started peeing, and glanced up, I was completely in awe of just how many stars were out that night. Now I'm used to seeing clear skies living in Fort William, but this night was different. I was still looking up at the sky when it hit me. I realized for the first time, just how quiet everything around me was. Not only did I not hear birds or other wildlife, I couldn't even hear the breeze on my face. There was a stillness to that night that I can't explain. I've never felt anything like it before, or since. Feeling a bit more awake by this point, I decided to jump back in the van and try to complete some more of the journey. I got about 100 metres down the road when just off in front of me and off to my right was a deer running along the edge of the woods. I slowed the vehicle down to get a better look but also anticipating that the deer might just turn left and run out in front of me. After driving alongside this running deer for a few seconds it did exactly what I expected it would do. It took a sharp left and ran straight across my path and into the middle of the road. I instantly slammed on my brakes and sent all my belongings in the back flying around everywhere inside the van. As I'm sat there in the middle of the road cursing this deer and thanking my lucky stars that we hadn't collided, a second deer appeared at the edge of the woods, then a third, and then a fourth. In total, I must have counted about 10 or 11 deers that came bolting out of the woods and leaped the full width of the road into the woods on the opposing side. By this point, I was now completely wide awake and filled with adrenaline, sat as far forward in my seat as I possibly could and staring through my windshield. That's when I saw it. At first, I thought it was just another deer moving on the edge of the woods, but then I saw that it was on two legs and appeared to be wearing clothing. So now I assumed that this was probably just a hunter wearing a ghillie suit. A lot like the ones you see in the sniper movies. But as this thing stepped out of the woods and came up onto the road, it must have been about 8 feet tall and was absolutely huge. I had a fear come over me like nothing I've ever experienced before in my life. I know it sounds crazy, but as this thing walked across the road, it turned its upper body to glance at me. And as it did this, I swear it screwed its face up and almost looked like it was in some kind of intense pain. Looking back now, I think this was because I still had the full beam lights on, and this creature somehow was affected by the bright lights. I didn't see any eye shine, it just carried on walking in the same direction that the deer had gone, 
and I literally felt paralyzed to move or do anything. Now I know this will sound really strange, but I remember thinking to myself over and over again, do not lean on the horn. Whatever you do, just do not lean on the horn. I was so fearful that whatever this creature was would think it was an act of violence and return to rip me out of the van. I didn't move a muscle. I didn't even want to put my foot on the gas to get the hell out of there, just in case the sound of the engine infuriated this creature. So I didn't. Instead, I just sat there for what felt like a lifetime, absolutely terrified to do anything. What I saw was almost the exact same creature as the one in the Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin film, only this thing was shaggy with wet, matted hair and covered in sticks. To say that I got a clear look at this thing is an understatement. I was practically leaning against the glass as far forward out of my seat as I possibly could and I had the full beam lights on. This was not a bear. Thank you so much, Ben, for listening to my story and all that you do here on the 401 Files. I've kept this story to myself for over 14 years now and I'm finally pleased that I can get this off my chest. Guys, I've got to be honest with you. When I read this in my email box, the hairs on the back of my neck stood completely on end. This is one of those stories that makes me just want to jump off the fence you know, a lot of the time we always say, oh, I'm on the fence with whether I believe Bigfoot or whether I don't believe. No, this kind of story, when I hear things like this, completely just catapults me off the fence and over to the side of the believers because <laughs> this is an incredible story. I especially love the part where this person explains the car lights making the animal or the, the Bigfoot squint as if it was almost in pain. That actually reminded me of Travis Walton. When Travis was abducted, he said that as he was laid on the table, he was screaming in fear. And he said that one of these little beings squinted as if it almost heard this high-pitched noise and was affected by it. Interesting, however, that this thing didn't produce any eye shine, but maybe that was just the angle that it was looking at. However, nonetheless, such an absolutely amazing story. Thank you so much for sending me that in. Guys, please do remember, if you do have an encounter or a story that you want to share with me here on the 401 Files, send them in to 401files at gmail.com. You guys have been awesome. As I always say, take it easy, stay safe wherever you are in the world. And if you are in a position to do so, please do look after somebody else as well.